Once I was interrupted in the middle of a presentation by a man who said, how can you handle this job? You didn't even polish your nails. We've been told that because we're a women-owned business that we're a risky business. We were advised to not over expose the fact that our company was headed up by women and that it would be better actually to have a man to front those aspects of what our company provided. I once had a buyer from a big corporation ask for a quote at least once a week and she would never get back to me. After a couple of months I asked her if everything was all right, if there was something wrong with the quotes I was sending. And finally she said, well, to tell you the truth, you're just a part of my KPI. It's like a club that you are a member, but you're not a member of. It's like you see from the glass, but you're never able to enter that room. I have a gender neutral name. This has gotten so many contracts signed because we win the work based on merit and not purely because I'm male or I'm female and the shock on their faces when they do realize that I'm female, it's priceless. Here's the brutal truth, right? I'm biased and so are you. Bias for me is when you're very comfortable in your own network and you're constantly going to the same people or doing the same process. Bias presents itself both as conscious and unconscious. The unconscious bias is much more subtle and is hidden. It's some type of misconstrued idea of another based upon our other characteristics. There's over 175 named, studied, and proven biases in decision-making. From your upbringing, your family, your society, where you're located, where your suppliers are located, a lot of these things that you see are day-to-day -day occurrences either in your life or in your business. Bias is an issue if you're not bringing in the best people who can propel your company forward, you can have an impact on your revenue, an impact on the products, and pro an impact on your client set. Women make up 51% of the world's population. If you're not including women businesses in your supply chain bidding opportunities, you're missing out on potentially competitive, innovative, and service-oriented suppliers. That leads to a loss of opportunity, ideas, performance, income. You're literally leaving money on the table. Think of what we can do if we incorporated and leverage more women-owned businesses into our supply chain. You're getting buying power, thought leadership, innovation. So it makes business sense. Bias cannot be totally eliminated. You have to mitigate that bias. You have to be proactive and understand it exists and create policies and structure that mitigates it as much as possible. Organizations that are serious about addressing bias in supply chain need to first look and identify the diverse suppliers that are already in the supply chain and help them understand how they can grow and do more business with your company. I have a group of supplier diversity professionals and a network of advocates across ExxonMobil whose job it is to try to find opportunities for women-owned and other diverse businesses to enter into our business. We're offering training to all new hires that come on board. And it's to start it from when they come in to make sure that we're embedding that in every employee that we have because that shows how important it is. We're ensuring that for every RFQ, every RFI, it has at least one diverse supplier on it. So these are actions that everyone should take from a corporate standpoint. You have to be intentional and you have to be aware. If you think you can start the diversity and inclusion work in supply chains without having a supportive culture, it's destined to fail. Culture determines your success regardless of how good or effective your strategies may be. 
It's so important that where you buy, where you live, where you work, that you have some representation of yourself. We start from the top, from our CEO, to make sure that we're not only creating that inclusive marketplace, but we're walking the talk. We've been around for 22 years with offices both in Singapore and in Malaysia. We operate in numerous countries within Africa, UAE and Europe. A number of our customers are Fortune 500 companies, three of which are in the top 100. We deliver IT products and services for the industry and even some Fortune 500. We work on large corporate clients right across the marketing disciplines and we've been operating for approximately 20 years. I feel most corporations could overcome bias by employing a more diverse workforce and also more diverse buyers within their supply chain. It's about the inclusion of females on boards, it's about inclusion of females in senior leadership positions. But we also need strategies so that we are not just recruiting and rewarding people like us. It cannot be just a lip service. So I think a good way would be to have staff who have worked very well with women-owned business to share their experiences. All we really want is a seat at the table. It's about being recognised for the work that we do and it's about being recognised for the successful businesses that we run. I believe that if we really look at creating that true inclusive marketplace, then we would look at just making sure that everybody is getting the work that they deserve. It's a world where I don't need a supplier diversity team or advocates around the world to provide the assistance to level the playing field for our people and our suppliers. Let's turn this into a network of professionals so that you utilize your contacts and you utilize those fully. That's how we will eliminate bias. That's how we will move forward. There is certainly more momentum now around gender inclusive sourcing efforts. And hopefully this will continue to grow as more companies realize the business case and bottom line impact that this can have. Make sure that this is a commitment throughout the corporation and that your CEO has made statements, that you have policies that enforce it and that are clearly stated. But policies and guidelines are one thing, but then you have to have a process that reinforces that. Create awareness around the great women-owned businesses and diverse businesses that are available to corporations and their capabilities. Educate your internal stakeholders or what's available to them and how they can partner with women-owned businesses. Training is a great place to start. Giving them the tools to be able to see and mitigate the bias in their decision-making. Measure everything you can. You can't measure everything, but when you collect all the decisions together and you look at the bottom line, you can tell when bias is creeping into your decision making. 